Hello and welcome to See If It Sticks. This is the podcast where we solve, <laughs> solve? We solve your first world problems. I am Dan. I am Dom. And I am Chris. Oh, oh. shit! The fox man is back. Oh. The foxy, foxy, foxy boy has come to outfox us once you again. You didn't tell me this was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was going to happen either, Chris. <laughs> This entire podcast is scripted. Is it like scripted to exact, within an inch of exactly, its improv life? Exactly scripted. This is if your you, life. If you wouldn't mind just doing your line, you didn't tell me this was going to happen again and put more inf- emphasis on <laughs> this. So instead of you didn't tell me this was going to happen, do you didn't tell me this was going to happen. <laughs> you didn't tell me this was going to happen. <laughs> I love the energy, Chris. I love the energy. <laughs> Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, just bear in mind you're not a evil Bond villain. Oh, although well. I'm hastily doing some rewrites where you are exactly that. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, you know what, uh, we'll see where the episode feel, takes I've, us. Yeah. I feel like we made a deal, and you've violated the terms of that agreement. So I let you come in with no trousers on, Chris. For God's sake, <laughs> <laughs> he's pulling a dom. How many more demands do you have? <laughs> His rider included a large club soda and a teddy bear he could have sex with. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. How I don't do you, know. You tell me. You tell, how, it's your rider. How do you have sex with a teddy bear? Well, there's a hole in it. Oh. That's, that's simple. That poor bear. Yes. Anyway. So I believe you have a problem for us. To yeah, it's, uh, it's in the script, Dan. I mean. Yeah. Well, I'm, I have I don't see your lines. That's oh. that's not how our um, scripts work. I, we're all blind to each other. That's why it seems like it's improvised. Okay, right. Well, it. <laughs> how did you write it then? Um, how is it written? You know that thing you do when you're at school and you write one line and then you cover that up the next line and then you have to write the it's next not, line. It's not really a script. Oh, doesn't matter. That's anyway. how me is. That's how <laughs> that's how we do it every week. Okay. Um, yeah, that's I heard that's for how so Lord of the Rings was written as well. I have. (laughs) Hello, is this on? (laughs) Dom is just. uh, just Lord of the Rings reads like a textbook. I understand. (laughs) Does it? I've never. I've never never read read Lord of the Rings. I've never read Lord of the Rings. That's the most. Well, I love Lord of the Rings for what it represents and where it stands in the canon of great fantasy novels. But it is loved by men who love engineering for a reason. Right. It's very big on the technical details, very short on plot. Okay. I um I mean my the I, I know I've said I think I've said this on the podcast before. I've seen each Lord of the Rings film exactly three times through all the way. Because I saw them when they came out of the cinema. Then we bought them on DVD. My dad bought them on DVD and we sat down and watched them as they came out. And then a few years ago when I was really ill, I sat down and rewatched them again. I've seen bits, you know, when they're shown on television or, or something. Yeah, like especially over the last week, it seems to be like this seems to be some sort of weird Lord of the Rings marathon. Is there an anniversary or something? I don't think so. But yeah, I, uh, I've i seen them exactly three times. But when the films came out and there was all that hype around them, oh my God, they're fantastic. They're the greatest films ever written. I don't know Not about that. Written. Well, how do you feel about The Hobbit? The book or the films? The films. The of films course. are terrible. Really? Absolutely terrible. What if they made it into one film? They made it into one film, it all worked. If they had if they just condensed, done two. If they condensed down all of the story beats, because there's only about five in the entirety of that trilogy, inverted commas, of films, that would have been a fucking awesome movie. It I don't really, know why they really And more Lee out. Pace, because his voice is like butter on my face. It really ruined the film for me when <clears throat> it got to the, the end of the first film and I was like, damn, this is this is moving along quickly. And then it gets to that final scene where they see the mountain in the distance. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> They're not even close to it. Do you know what? That book is like a 300 page book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> well, I don't know why. Why do, do three? One, they could have done it in two. They could have done it in one quite easily done it in one without all the bullshit that'd be a long film though but yet i've said it, i've also said it a lot of times on this show that I, my optimum length for a film is 90 minutes to maybe 100 minutes at a push oh, i think that shit. is the perfect okay i think that is the perfect like during during the 90s 
and early noughties, that was like every film that came out was hour and a half. Hour, hour and a half. Maybe sometimes, occasionally, if it's a real epic touching on two hours. We are definitely living in an age of film bloat. Because people want to feel like they've got their money's worth, I get it. Yeah. But there's a lot of films out there that could have been... I mean, look at Mad Max, right? How long's that? That is, um, I think it's like an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. One of the most lauded films of the last few years, pop culturally. Yeah. Perhaps not maybe artsily. Actually, no, it won... Single sequence, I That's. Uh, I think that's the way to go. Yeah. It's a beautiful film. It's a beautiful piece of filmmaking, and it's an hour and 40 minutes long. Batman vs. Superman is about a week long, and it's trash. Yeah, especially the, the, the extended edition is slightly better, but then you do have to commit another 15 minutes to it. 15 days. That's what it feels like. <laughs> How long is it, actually? Um, it was, I think the initial cut was about two and a half hours. I think the extended one was about two and three quarters. It's too much. It just feels so long. It's too much. But think about, like, I don't know, like, what are, what are the films that come out recently? Like the Marvel films, they're all relatively short. Yeah, some of them that have been getting a little bit longer, but mm. I think that what their advantage is is the is with like Civil War and the, like um, they've got a lot of different people to the follow. Winter Soldier, yeah. There's mm. a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on, and also I think they're really well paced. Yes, they are very well paced. I don't get I don't get bored. It's like the- Lee pace. It's like um, he's in Guardians of the Galaxy. It's like how uh, he's just got a voice, man. I love it. Like the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises, there wasn't, there's not much between the um, length of those two films. But the Dark Knight Rises feels like I feel like years Dark Knight Rises. Dark Knight Rises, I believe, is shorter than the Dark Knight, but it feels longer. Dark Knight, kind of, I get, I get to that point where Harvey Dent turns into Harvey Two Face, and I'm like, holy shit. Like, how do we get here already? Yeah. Riveting. Anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah. I mean. Yeah. So Lord the, of the Rings book is rubbish. That's, that's what. Like, not uh, rubbish. It's worth, it's worth one read right. in life. I did try when. Those, I've read it three times. And I could, I could quite happily never read it. Again. Right. I, I tried, but I just couldn't get, you know me, I'm, I, all these crazy words. Crazy words. Of the yeah. ring you mean like um <laughs> you mean like elven names and stuff like that yeah but that's the beauty of lord that is its great strength is that it's created an entire world yes but also that is one of its greatest weaknesses yeah because it's hard yep. to pass without a little bit of you shall not pass Flame of <laughs> you shall not pass how often do you practice that not very often. I just have a natural <laughs> you know, theatrical instinct. I saw, um, I saw Ian McKellen in a play over Christmas. What was that one? The one he was in with Patrick Stewart? Yes. It was called No Man's Land. Yes. Yeah. Are, Are they, they not good? the same person? They're basically the same person. Okay. Hmm. It was very good. They're very, they're very good. I'm kind of glad because it, it's kind of apparent, particularly when you're in a theatre, so you're only sort of 20 feet away from these people. That they are getting quite old. Make it so. So I'm quite glad that I got to see them before they croaked. Yes, that's the the, the polite way of putting it. Yes. Passed on from this mortal realm. Passed on from this mortal coil. Yeah. Gone towards the four lights. Four lights. Oh, have you seen um talking of just coming on to extra geekery? People with VR headsets out there. Has anyone seen Star Trek Bridge Crew, the game? Oh, my God. Have you seen it? Have you seen this? No. No. Um, Oh, my God. It's awesome. You are. So you and a bunch of people all have 800-pound headsets, and uh, (laughs) you buy this game, and you are the bridge crew. One of you is the captain. One of you is helm. One of you is your security. I have seen that. It is fucking fantastic to look at. Even to watch people play it, it's fantastic. Okay. Because you can just like pose in the seats. So obviously you can do the Kirk, you know, hand to the, hand yeah, the face. Uh, yeah. You could do Patrick Stewart, stand up, adjust your uniform, you know, all this shit. Have you, uh, have you played VR? I have played. I've, I've played Vive and Oculus. Well, I used to work at a game shop, so well, I used to have to demonstrate I mean, that, all that shit. That helps. Um, and one of the guys there had a, uh, Ocu- a, 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 a Vive, um, which is, in my opinion, the uh, best. 
Yeah, yeah, I did play the Vive and um, have never punched a wall so hard in my life <laughs> when I was playing Drunken Bar Fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, that's the best thing about the Vive is that, well, I suppose you punched a wall, but I always find the Vive shepherding because it's a full room VR. I just got too excited. Um, sort of really keeps you away from like objects <laughs> that are real. Anyway, yes, Star Trek Bridge Crew. Oh, game stuff. I also no enjoy idea. the games. Yeah, I don't. it's always surprised me. I don't got the time. I think for me, the first, <laughs> my, my my favorite one on the Vive was um, what's that Labs game? Is it's it? Valve, Valve, Valve Labs, yeah, Valve Labs. It's yeah. the archery. Oh, that's so oh funny. my god, god damn it's it. great. You actually like pull back the bow and everything. It's got two hand like sort of controllers. Mm. The feedback, you even feel the string twanging oh, under really? your finger. It's that's cool. really, really quite yeah, special. Yeah, it's funny because I think. VR is one of those things where, um, you know, for example, if you sat down and tried to play any game with a keyboard and mouse, you'd probably struggle a little bit because you're not used to it, the movements. And yeah. Stuff. Yes, I've always been bad at that as but, well. But like VR is so like, you know, innate because it's just like you're movements. doing it for real. If something's up there, you just move your hand to it so naturally. Yeah. You can't, it's like, for example, in your headset, you can see where the, where the remote controls are. So if they're on the floor... Um, you can see it as if it's actually there and you just bend over and pick it up. There's no direct visual contact to that. You just bend over and pick it up because that's had, what you um, normally do. I had a go on Ross's PlayStation, got PlayStation VR. VR. I had a go, he got me to play through the Batman game, which was, um, yeah, it's weird. It's very weird. I, I mean, I, I get that sort of like, you're not, that's probably not the, like the greatest quality of VR given that it's- No, but it's of, still pretty decent. Yeah. So I, it, it's, it, yeah, it was interesting. It was I would very only, short, but I would only get VR to play Elite Dangerous, um, spaceship simulator. Okay, um, very good. I've got my joystick, so you can use. I like how it's a simulator, as if it's simulating something. That well, it uses Newton. <laughs> it's a Newtonian. It uses Newtonian physics. Right. Um, you should play it. So it's real. Well, it's not real, is it? But it's real. But it is it. It, you deal with inertia and everything, you know, you would possibly deal with in space. Turn oh, down Kerbal a Space Program. A bit like Kerbal Space Program. Oh, I love it. I love it, Kerbal Space Program. But do you know what? You recommended me Kerbal Space Program mm -hmm. some time ago. And you I, will fucking love it, mate. I downloaded the demo and I still haven't got around to playing it. That, this is how, this oh is how, my God. This is how I don't play games because I never have time to. You do? When? You do. I'm get it for, for Instead of birthday. watching loads of TV in the evenings, play some video games. Well, I don't. I don't watch TV in the evenings. I do you not? I only watch TV when I'm with Maddie. All oh, right, fair dues. What do you I, do in the evenings then when you're not with Maddie? Um, podcast or band, and then sleep. Oh, that's true. Well, can't you just do it instead of work? Are you oh yeah, I could do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. If someone wants to pay me to play Kerbal Space Program, I'm uh, happy to take yeah, them you up could, on you that. You could definitely run it on your Mac as well. I used to I used to run it on mine. Yeah, I've, I have. I have got it downloaded. I've, I've, it's excellent. Some yeah. of the bigger, some of the more ridiculous scenarios might slow it down a bit. Your Mac, but. Uh, You'd still be able to play it. Yeah, it's it wasn't it wasn't too bad. Um, it it takes a bit of learning though, so yeah. it's not like you can just jump into it. it takes no. like it's good fun time. though. Yeah. Kerbal Space Program. But if it's anything like the last game I I played, which is Roller Coaster Tycoon, I'll be fine. I can imagine this. Not it much. is a little bit like <laughs> that. This equals a lot <laughs> of bit. unintended death. Oh really? But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh excellent. Yeah. Oh, no, I'll, I'll fit right into that. Yeah. Oh, you should see. Um, Gems just recently bought, um, what was it called? By Frontier, saying so people make Elite Dangerous. Okay. Uh, what's it called? It's a theme park thing. Oh. Uh, I can't remember what the fuck it's called. And she was banging on about it for like six months. It's basically Roller Coaster Tycoon turned up to a million. Right. Okay. You can build anything. Planet Coaster. Planet Coaster. Planet Coaster. Very good. Is it roller coasters? Is it a theme park on a planet? No, you build the, the theme park from scratch and you can actually create your own. If you're that way inclined, you can actually create your own objects in game. Right. Through 3D modeling and stuff like wow. that. Oh. And build your own. But there's a lot of pre rendered stuff you can yeah, yeah. do. Really cool. It's mental. Really cool. Let's move on to Chris's problem. Oh, yes. Chris, you have a problem. Yeah. I mean,. <clears throat> Obviously, the reason I came here today is because this has been bothering me for a long time. Of course. True. Of um, course. Our phone has been ringing off the hook. He's been begging us. He's been at the door most weeks. The severity of this problem is 
incredibly high. And uh, yeah, uh, have, having heard a, a little snippet of it before, I'm, I'm already... We're at, we're at DEF CON 1 or 5, depending. I can never remember which one's the worst. 2.5. One. <laughs> Dom knows. The DEF CON 1's the worst. DEF CON 5 we're is at, like, everything's all gay. We're at sna- one. snacking level severe. DEF CON 1. So yeah, um, I mean, it's a daily occurrence of me eating hummus with various foods, carrot sticks, peppers, bread. I like to go crazy with it. Um, the problem, The problem I'm having is when I'm eating said hummus, at what rate to consume the hummus in ratio to the dippy, so, if you will. So to clarify, you don't want to get too much hummus on there and then run out of hummus exactly. before you run out of carrot sticks. You don't want to use too little hummus and then run out of carrot sticks before you run out exactly. of Exactly, and I seem to do a mixture of the two. So, I mean, I start off, you know, quite stingy, like, you know, I live in a third world country and I need to preserve the hummus. And then later on... Do you think they have... <laughs> They have hummus in third world countries. I can't imagine a life without hummus. So, it, it, chickpeas. That, that reality doesn't be available work. most places. Yeah, but then you know, like throw some extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of garlic. You know? <laughs> 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 yeah. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you have any solutions for it, but I just I can't go on any longer. It the is optimum a good, amount of hummus. It is that it is a problem which I encounter because I am quite have become quite a. Quite a, quite a big hummus consumer. A hummusite. Now, just before we start getting down into the nitty-gritty of this hummus-based conundrum, mm. what's everybody's favourite flavour of hummus? Uh, I just like I just like the regular hummus, but I, occasionally... If, Other um, than regular hummus, because if, everybody loves it. Occasionally I see a, um, like a red, red pepper kind of hummus, and I, that, that really uh, tickles my pickle. I like caramelised onion hummus. Ooh, Ooh risky. Nice. That's, that's something I enjoy. I actually like, I, I like, I'm going to go crazy here and say I like a seeded hummus. Seeded? Seeded? Hummus and the seeded? Seeds in there. Seeded. It's sort of a bit purpley. What happens, but... if the, what happens if the plants grow in your stomach? <laughs> <laughs> you got a tree sprouting out your mouth. Yeah. No, no one wants that. It's a serious problem Has that me. happened yet? Have you pooped a I like tree? To, I like to live on the edge. They call you Chrissy Chrissy Oaky Face. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Why would they call me? Out. It gives people acorns. <laughs> the bush pooper. Oh, God. <laughs> Meadow pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way I see it Shrub is that I'm, 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 <laughs> Do you remember your mum when you were little if you ate like the like part of the core of the thing? She said, oh, don't eat those apple seeds because they'll grow in your tummy. Did you ever get that? No, because my so mother like didn't traumatise me, Dom. Yeah, I know. No, yeah, I got that. I also had the, uh, if you swallow the chewing gum, it stays in your stomach for seven years. Lies. Is that not true? Lies. Is that lies? It's absolute lies. Do you pass it quite quickly then? Well, same as you poop every, everything every, else out. Every cell in your body replaces itself in seven years. I'm pretty sure you, it could get rid of some chewing gum, right? Oh, that's what I do. Did you ever get clean behind your ears? Otherwise you get potatoes growing yeah, out there. Yeah. 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 Yep. Potatoes. I mean, no, that's not playing with your willy or it'll fall off. Yeah, or uh, <laughs> or you'll go blind. Get out, mum! Pound it up! It'll fall off! <laughs> yeah, I hadn't heard that one till last week. <laughs> oh, Daniel. Some God people again. say, like, their mum said, don't play with yourself or you get hairy palms or something. Uh, I believe that was a popular, like, um, myth to, to put teenagers off masturbating in like the 50s or something oh, really? like you get hairy palms if you masturbate or something hairy palms no i don't know what i feel how i'd feel about hairy palms <laughs> they'd be, would it be, an be advantage? much warmer huh be much warmer when you yeah sort of trying to warm True. your warm if you if you up. were to you to be a bit more abrasive on your willy though wouldn't it? but you you would also get there's you run the risk of getting um seminal fluid matted into oh. it oh no that is a bad idea mm. But I'm sure you're used to dealing with that with, that with your beard anyway, Dom. <laughs> <laughs> don't have much of a beard at the moment, really. No, I you don't. have to I shave it off because it got massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For that like, exact reason. Like, like, <laughs> like cutting chewing gum out of someone's hair. Oh, fine. Right, fuck that. Leave it alone. Oh, that's too far. <laughs> this is also quite good, actually, that Ross isn't here this week because uh, Ross is so allergic to, to beans and peas and stuff like that, isn't he? Is, yeah. Is, would, beans, would, beans. Would chickpeas be something which was... Well, they're Ross's all pulses, aren't they? So is it a general thing with pulses or is it just kinds of beans? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, but the, to, uh, are just, you asking me? I don't know. Just to, well, you, you came here with the problem. Have you, not, have you not done a little bit of prior reading? I'm not Ross. 
Um, yeah, he probably would have um, been fainting at the mention of chickpeas and hummus. Mm, I do love a good hummus. I like a bit of hummus. Now, that is... How are we going to solve this? What I think you should possibly do mm-hmm. is just use your last one to mop up the rest of the hummus. That's what I generally do. <sighs> Come on, guys. And then you, you do better than that. You want something better this is than what this? what I already do. <laughs> well, I mean, if there's still some left... Problem solved. Let's see you there. If there's still some left, um, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to be a brute or anything, but I'm going to stick my finger in there. Hey, why not? A brute. Isn't it funny how, like, some things, it is, like, in your mind, it's sort of quite acceptable to stick your finger in. It's okay to stick your finger in there. Where where, where is this going? (laughs) No, for example. How old was she? (laughs) (laughs) For example, hummus, I think is quite acceptable to get your finger in there and fish the rest of the hummus Mm -hmm. out. Let's go with a goulash. Probably not. But, yeah, but, like, say, like, you know, like, like, jam, probably not quite as acceptable to stick your finger in a jar of jam. Mm. Marmite. Not as acceptable. No. Though I do do it. Also sticky. Mm. Nutella. Acceptable. Don't like Nutella. You don't? Don't particularly like the taste of hazelnut. It's dessert. That's fair enough. It is dessert. Yeah, it is. Why do people put it on their toast? Because it's fucking delicious. You know, it's the stuffing from Ferrero Rocher. Is it? It's the inside of Ferrero Rocher. Oh, Ambassador, you are spoiling us. There you go. Is it? Is it actually just the same stuff, is it? Yeah. It actually comes from, from the, the same, same factory, factory and everything. Factory. Really? Same company. Well, it makes sense because I don't like Ferrero Rocher either. <laughs> I like both. No, it's good. Well, if it ever comes down to it, you know, you get all the Ferrero Rocher and a Yeah. I'll get whatever else there is. Mm. Hopefully Twixes because I love a Twix. Well, I can just go home and make my own Ferrero Rocher then. Now, here's my... Um, make your own Ferrero Rocher? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I suppose you could. Um, now, here is my... Um, well, I could get my own... Make my own jar of Nutella by buying several Ferrero Rocher and then scraping, the milking, milking the Ferrero yes, Rocher, mil- milking the Ferrero Rocher. Nutella mining, yes, <laughs> gonna be big, bigger than when, Bitcoin. When the big, when the big Nutella shortage occurs, Dan will be <laughs> laughing it up with his tubs full of Ferrero Rocher. In it. <laughs> Come get your Nutella, Pyramid. rich from the Rocher. Pyramids of Ferrero Rocher. I'll be sitting on top of it. Going, <laughs> <laughs> I am your god now. <laughs> anyway, I don't know why people go so mad for it. It's just a sort of subpar nutty chocolate spread. I quite enjoy it. Yeah, I know, but people absolutely go shit yeah. balls for it. Mind you, I think I've been conditioned not to be too bothered about it because you know when I was a kid, we didn't have exceptional amounts of money, and Nutella is quite expensive. So we had we had store brand chocolate spread. Yeah, so did I, and I think it's much better than fucking Nutella. Yeah, hard days. They were. You ever had the chocolate spread? You get the store brand chocolate spread that's white and milk chocolate. Mm. No, that is fucking vile, but also awesome. Anyway, here's they my taste s- the same. No, they- actually, it does taste like white and milk. Okay, um, what does white taste like? You mean white, white chocolate? chocolate <laughs> yeah, dick mm, tastes a little like white. <laughs> you know, bland. <laughs> <laughs> what does this hummus taste like? Mm, green, <laughs> a bit of blue, a bit of a bit of purple. Um, here's my idea. Okay. So, you know, when you get toothpaste, it um, says yes. to put a pea sized amount on your toothbrush. Yes. Yeah. Guidance on the side of the hummus packet. Mm-hmm. Put exactly the size of your thumbnail or, you know, some other object we could easily identify the size of. Mm-hmm. And how, on each. But how do you know how many carrot sticks I have? Oh, well, they have a chart. <laughs> <laughs> well, going on from there, what, what, I don't know what the problem would be with, with having squeezy hummus. Oh, because you could pipe it out, and then at the end of it, you don't have to stick your fingers in there, and I think you just pipe it into your own mouth, like, like that disgusting squeezy hummus sounds good. That cheese. disgusting squeezy cheese, more portable as well, Buddy. much more portable. And I can imagine that that's easier to store. You could just sort of pop it in the fridge. Mm. But would the sort of whatever plastic tubes like that are made out of would that react with the hummus? Usually, it's metal, isn't it? Might react with the hummus. I don't think so. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want my hummus. They're like food goodness. grade metal, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, or something. yeah. It's probably why that shit's so expensive. I wouldn't mind squeezy hummus. Squeezy hummus sounds excellent. Also, better portion control with the squeezy hummus. Yeah, because sometimes you can sort of overcook it a little bit with the pot. Well, what you could have is um, how you could you could probably have some sort of um, dosing control on on a Ooh. on a on a squeezy thing of hummus like a drip yeah <laughs> machine yeah yeah okay a drip of hummus 
Yeah, or like a, you know, like a, I don't know, like, like a bong sort of thing. You squeeze the hummus into a sort of a, uh, it's a, it's first thing, and then you sort of, you know. And then you inject it. O- op- <laughs> open the air hole on it and pipe it out. <laughs> Every serving the same size. Beautiful. You'll get at least 100 carrot sticks from one tube of hummus. Yeah, like you, if you know exactly. Because then exactly. you can put the, so then the whole um, problem of leaving a uh, half empty pot of hummus evaporates then because you, you know, you've got it in this tube. So it's going to stay fresher. I would, I would actually like it if it was sort of perhaps styled like a, a Pez uh, dispenser or oh, something like that. Okay, and they'll disco hummus. We'll get they, it. it. It'd be a Pez dispenser, but they would sell the carrot sticks with the Pez dispenser, so it perfectly, you know, distributed oh, them amongst okay. the carrot sticks. Well, this is actually quite a nice idea because if you had it in sort of like like a large Pez dispenser and you opened up Skeletor's head. Yeah, that's okay. Right, mm-hmm. and it and it and it dishes out a a dose of hummus. Then you could you could still what you know um, use the carrot stick to dip, basically you know wipe the hummus off of it. I like that off of his little thing. You get the same portion like a hummus sing- prit stick. Yeah, mm-hmm. you get hummus the same portion stick. every time, but you still get the satisfaction of getting the bread in there mm. or whatever your chosen bit of toasted pita. Oh. Yeah, that's my that's my weapon of choice when it comes to hummus. I quite like that. I pita. like that idea. Can we have other characters other than Skeletor? Which characters would you like? I used to have a Donald Duck one, which I sort of Everyone liked. had a Donald Duck I one. I got a Thor oh. one at home. Really? Yeah, I've got a Thor one. I didn't see any cool ones like that when I was a kid. Apart well, from this was one relatively recently bought. Oh, right, right. Um, <laughs> well, as a <laughs> stock- your collection. As a, no, as a stocking present. You know, you yeah, get funny yeah. stocking presents for Christmas. I can't, I, I can't remember the last time I had Pez. It must, have been, it must be decades ago. It must have been before I was probably... 10 years old, but I could still taste Pez when I think about it. Yeah. I know Very exactly what Pez sweet. tastes like. Can when Skeletor's head open up, can be like, ah, ha, ha, yeah, did you, man. Say, did you have one of the ones that made noise when you were a kid? Yeah. Yeah, they were great. Oh, that'd be awesome. What would the 21st century Pez be? I don't, I don't really know. I don't know. Well, what do kids, what do, what do kids love these? Well, actually, you've got to market it towards people that eat hummus, which is, is everyone. That is <laughs> so, um, literally everyone. Literally everyone on the planet. Homes. All socioeconomic demographics mm. eat hummus. It would have to obviously last desert conditions for the tribes that eat hummus. That's true. So of what course. characters what well, characters they could they, they could have one of their sort of um gods or something on there. Like you the, could have a mm, head of a buffalo. The hummus girl. <laughs> the hummus yeah. god. So you could have a political political themed ones. So you could have a uh, Theresa May one that just sneers at you when you open it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, you could have Donald Trump one where you just pull off the top of his wig. <laughs> yes. Uh, you could have a Macron one that plays because he famously was using like a pretty hip song during his presidential campaign. Um, what was it? I can't remember. It was Didn't something you'd recognise if you heard it. Proper, proper Radio 1 fodder. Lincoln Park or something. No, it's Proper Radio 1 fodder. I can't remember what it was though. Okay. Um <laughs> Sandstorm by the <Daru. laughs> Yeah. Um, that could be the desert, desert themed one. Yeah. yeah. Daru, Sandstorm. Yeah. yeah. Um, you could have all the Marvel characters, obviously. Yeah. Um, you could have shittier versions that are knockoffs that are the DC characters for the so films. What, 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 exactly, <laughs> what exactly are we thinking in this case? Is the is a typical hummus consumer then? Like, like if this is. Well, everyone has a bit of hummus now, don't they? I think so. When you reach the lofty heights of the supermarket sandwich um, fridge. What? You know, oh, you mean like the little, you get a little bit of dip yeah, and a little bit yeah. of the carrot. When you yeah. reach those heights, you're for everyone. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But this Bacon, could, this lettuce could, and tomato. Yeah, this could, this could encourage children as well to eat more hummus. And the hummus is not bad for you either. No. Too much is, you know, probably not good for you either. Disagree. Well, wow. disagree. You can never have too much hummus, but everything in moderation. Wait, wait, too much, too much water will kill you. That's true. Too much of anything will kill you, apart from love. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, uh, I do think that probably everyone would enjoy a bit of hummus. Um, yeah. You Even could, my grandma loves hummus. You could have, um, yeah, you could have, you could have hummus for the elderly. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
What would what would that look like? I'm not I'm not sure. Uh, Ronnie Corbett, very beige. Oh yeah, uh, do you know what I was gonna say? Tom, Tommy Cooper, this hat, yeah. little hat, comes yeah. Like, oh, yeah, genius. There's Ronnie Corbett, uh, yeah. he does little glasses. Uh, Ronnie Barker, two Ronnies. Yeah, two Ronnies. Walking on Wise. Um, what else? Captain about, Scarlet. What else do old people like? Uh, classical composers. Um, classical composers. They? Tory MPs. Um, <laughs> Yeah, 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 no ethnic minorities. Um, <laughs> large renderings of uh, country house gardens. Uh, oh, when they open it up, it plays the theme tune from Songs of Praise. Yes. <laughs> um, and Cuds Roadshow. Fiona Bruce. Your hummus is here. Um, yeah, I enjoy this. What about with a thicker manual inside and how to open the top of a pez? What about like kids at school? They're trying to be cool. They they're at that awkward stage of life. They don't want to be seen like you know having the comic book stuff because that's too kiddie. Oh, popular artists of the time. I don't know who they are now. So, um, lethal dizzle, um, piddle whittle. <laughs> No. Tiny, <laughs> no. tiny temper. You both said one, and you just turned to look at me like I was just going <laughs> to spontaneously say one. <laughs> piddle whittle. <laughs> That's mine. I know. <laughs> Don't you be dissing piddle whittle. <laughs> That's Dom's rap name. <laughs> piddle whittle. Yo! Piddle yeah. whittle in the house. Show Chris some of your sick rhymes. No, that's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel entirely too fresh today. I'll spit hot fire at you later, Chris. That sounds unpleasant. Mm. <laughs> it will be, but you'll learn a ting or two. <laughs> yeah. Fam. Wow. Um, yeah. Well, I think we've got this down. Super happy with the response. Um, when's, it, when's it going to production? Uh, I can probably knock you off a prototype immediately. Cool. Cool. Here it is. Because it can kind of work. <laughs> it can kind of work like one of those toothpaste dispensers where you have the um, yeah like the cylinder and you press the the plunger thing at the top. Yep. So it comes out. So that oh, I like the idea of your the wiping. The, yeah, it's it still come dipping, off, but but the like the in the, the internals of it will probably look something like that because you you have the sort of plunger going up from the bottom mm. and then every time you tilt their head back, it would squeeze that exact amount of hummus. Onto a little, into a little serving bowl at the front. So it would look probably look like Roddy Barker is vomiting hummus. Oh. Even better, you can have novelty ones like oh. the Christmas novelty ones. You know, you like Halloween the, ones. Like the the, the 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 mule turn. You know, he cock his bum over and he poops hummus, hummus really? out. Yeah, New Christmas tradition. You could have you could have, you could have stag ones. <laughs> Christmas hummus. You could have shit. stag night ones. You know, where, yeah. where you know they come out of willies. Yeah, you, you yeah. do the same for hen nights. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of willies involved on both nights. That's all I'm. Yeah. That's all I'm sort of saying. It's funny that, isn't we it? Yeah, it's odd. Way. We live in a very fallow centric world, Dan. Well, get my tumbler out. Right. Um, I like it. I really like this oh, idea. I like. You it need too. one of those. Um, one of the things that the judges use. Gavel. We need I know, we've, we've, like been, we've been saying that for, for a year now. Ever since we began this podcast, we've been saying the most, what we want is we want like a, a rubber stamp sound. Okay. Oh so, God, that didn't boom, sound like a stamp. Well, well, you've got stamps here, haven't you? Go um, kunch, kunch. Not very satisfying sounding ones. No, like a proper like 80s movie yeah. going to City Hall stamp. What happened to that date stamp that you had? The kunch, kunch. Um, I still love you. It, it is around, around here somewhere. I'm not sure. Hold on, let me see if I... Oh, that's upsetting. I normally just do this. Solved. Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't think that those um, date stamps are very satisfying. I went to the. I went to the post office over the weekend to get my international driver's license. Right. Um, so that I can drive. What do you need that for? Is that a thing? So, so I can drive when I go to Mauritius. Yeah. Do you need that? Wait, hang on. You go away? Is that a, is that a thing? Have I been driving illegally? <laughs> Probably. I lived in Germany for a good couple of months. I know that's that EU's fine, I think. So. But I um, drove around America quite fine as well. I don't know. I think it's something to do with the we had to hire the car and we've got to hire the car out there. But I hired a car in America with nothing but my UK driver license. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's different laws. Did you make it up? No, they 
Is made My up. international man of mystery license. <laughs> 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 It's my, my intercontinental lovemaking license. Yeah. <laughs> See, get- Manny, we have to now. <laughs> I got the license and everything. It get- means I'm competent enough to make <laughs> sex on a plane. <laughs> no, it's, but they had the they had the stamp, and they have to stamp all the, oh, right, all, yeah. all the different categories of car, of car you could drive. But no, yeah, it's like one of those ones that they they sort of it's that classic rubber sort of post office stamp. So they sort of do that like. You know what I mean? Oh, they, they, they smash it in the in the ink and then smash it on where they need to go. Smash it. Smash it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I find that incredibly satisfying when I see them do it. No, it's a... you were born to be a bureaucrat, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love paperwork, me. Oh, I fucking hate paperwork. Well, you've got to find a name. We do need to find a name, and it needs to be a pun on hummus. It definitely needs to be a pun on hummus. Possibly Lord of the Rings thrown in somewhere. When you said a pun on hummus, I thought to myself, this is going to be so easy because I'm sure I've heard many hummus puns before. But now that it's come to it, I've... And a lot of them involve Hamas. <laughs> <laughs> Do they? <laughs> well, I've heard a lot of hummus puns that use the word hummus in place of Hamas. Let's try, uh, let's try to leave terrorist organisations out of this. Yeah, probably, yeah probably, um, probably a good idea. That's, I just, I just feel like they might have bad connotations. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, perhaps. I've got a feeling that's going to affect our ranking on the podcast. App. <laughs> oh, Chris is smiling. No, he's lost it. I haven't got anything. Oh. I haven't got anything. <laughs> nothing. Nothing there. Lord of the Chickpea. No, that's terrible. You got to get the bad ones out to find the good ones. Putting the mm in hummus. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me like that, Chris. <laughs> so long and thanks for all the hummus. Um, Don't think those thoughts at me. <laughs> handling hummus humorously whilst heinously, Hemorrhaging. heinously defacing Why pop culture that? icons. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. God, this is a diff- It sounds like. If it, like it sounds like it should be an easy name to come up with. Yeah. One, one involving hummus. How about the fox comes to town? What's that got to do with hummus? Well, it's got to do with Chris. What does Auntie Bram's Grand Slam have to do with whatever the hell that episode was about? It was a club, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Bram's Grand Slam was uh, was it was the club that we invented. Speak easy. The fans snas- The fans snack tips. Fan. Fan snack tick Mr. Mr. Fox. I <laughs> <laughs> like that one. The fan snack stick. Fan snack fan snack, 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 snack stick. Sticks. The fan sta- fan snack stick Mr. Fox. I like it. God, that was hard to ask. <laughs> Christ. That, that'll do. That'll do. <laughs> <laughs> that'll do. Okay, fine. That will do. Pete. So this episode, however, is... however, every, every great podcast ends. That that'll do. <laughs> oh, for God's sake! God damn it! <laughs> uh, Ross should have edited this bit down, but the that that actually took three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I've got seventy-five missed calls. <laughs> <laughs> and what's it called, Dom? One more time. The fan snack stick, Mister Fox. Yes, I've actually watched the whole of Batman vs Superman. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't bring myself to do it. There was no Hermes puns in that film. If you had to watch um, Batman vs. Superman or the second Hobbit film, if you choose between the two. Second Hobbit film. Really? Ooh. Neither. I, I, I don't have to choose. Fine. <laughs> Fine. Okay, so that is the name of the podcast. I'm not going to repeat it again because I can't seem to say it, even though it's my idea. The fan snack stick, Mr. Fox. Excellent. There we go. Um, Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming in. Um, you, a bit nice. Good finger guns there. That doesn't really translate on the podcast. It, <laughs> it just, it just sounds like you uh, have Tourette's. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Get him in. Uh, I'm not humoring people with Tourette's. Though someone, Though someone, they are quite funny. Someone with Tourette's came in the office the other day. Did I yeah. tell you about this? No, no. It was the most bizarre thing of it because there was a lot of shouting. And... Um, so we have quite a lot of stuff in here. Yeah. Sort of my initial thought was that 
because I could hear someone coming up the stairs and a lot of shouting and I could hear my other colleagues moving around quite rapidly. Um, I thought that someone had sort of come in to like rob us. <laughs> so... <laughs> out the door. Hello, hello, what's all this shouting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we, we were... We cut, sort of went went out there, but yeah, it was, it was a guy with Tourette's. I've never met someone with Tourette's in real life. You know, I don't think I have either. I used to have, uh, have a good friend from childhood had pretty severe Tourette's, but it wasn't like one of the swearing ones. Was it really? It was like a more ticks, physical, physical tick. tick. Yeah. yeah, I think that's possibly the more common version. Is it? I don't know. I, I don't think know. I, I don't. I I would not claim to know anything about Tourette's. You get used to it very quickly, and, and oh, god, yeah, a I'm lot sure. a lot of it was also balancing his medication because sometimes he was really bad, and sometimes he was you could barely even notice. Really, like, once every half an hour or something. Well, he just sort of boop. And when he played clarinet, he didn't tick ever. Really crazy. I've they, heard they, a lot of things like that. Yeah, they sort of sort of like. Um, they have one activity that yeah, yeah. they can completely... Music's quite common, I think. Is it? Yeah. I suppose yeah. you get caught up in the rhythm and the rhyme and the melody. Yeah, the uh, the guy the other day was definitely a sweary one. Oh, really? Did he not have his clarinet? <laughs> no, he, didn't have a, he, didn't, he didn't have a clarinet. <laughs> his but... Tourette's clarinet. No. Uh, That'd be a good name for the podcast if you were able to talk a, about the Tourette's clarinet. It was, Tourette's it was a symphony of the word cunt, though. Oh, right. It was, Fantastic. It was, yeah, he was, it was full pickle. Da, 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 da. I think <laughs> cunt, 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 cunt. Yes. Uh, anyway. well, on that note, that we usually try and only fit three of those into the podcast, but I think that was seven. That's fine. Uh, it wasn't, I wasn't counting. Um, <laughs> We will be back next week. Uh, in the meantime, give us your first world problems and head to stickitpod.com, which has all the links to our social media and you can send us an email and get in touch with us. Thank you very much for Chris for coming in. Thank week. you. Um, is there anything that uh, you want punted out on our podcast? Do you want to promote anything? <laughs> no. No, I don't want anything punted out. It's Chris Chris Fox, Man Escort, is available. Um Tuesdays through Thursdays. And ladies, he has no rules. <laughs> it's true. That is the only rule. That there are no rules. They like Fight Club. <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's not the rule of Fight Club. Well, there's no <laughs> rules other than one rule. <laughs> there's no rules other than one rule Come in on, Fight God. Club. Get with it. No, there's only one rule in Fight Club. What like, Fight Club did one. you watch? There's only one rule in this Fight Club. <laughs> that there are several other rules. <laughs> <laughs> No, Chris only has one rule that there's no rules. There's only one rule in Fight Club. You don't talk about Fight Club. Chris only has one rule. There are no rules, but also that you must be rule. shaven. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. And presentable at all times. Uh, we will see you next week. For this week, I've been Dan. I've been Tom. I've unfortunately been Chris. Oh, what are you talking about? <laughs>